are so close to being enclosed here on the studio. Hi everybody. We are, what, what I mean by enclosed is being able to have all the windows and doors that close and open and all the, all the ways that flies, bugs, um, mice or anything can get in here. Um, have them be able to open and shut and just be, um, yeah, closed. So this is the second to last step to being able to call the windows and close, which is I'm just sealing the windowsill. And then there's a little gap here between the windowsill and the actual frame of this that you're not going to be able to see. And that's just going to uh, get a little bead of silicone. But, um, but yeah, anyway, so I'm just using linseed oil to, to seal this uh, saltillo tile, which is a very porous material. And it's always a good idea to seal porous materials when you're going to be getting a lot of water. Um, and yeah, linseed oil, I was just thinking how useful linseed oil is. So, so linseed oil comes from flax. And I was just thinking about flax and what a useful plant that is. So flax, you can get flaxseed, which you know you get in your granola, or you can just put it in your smoothie or wherever. Um, the flax plant is where you, where you get linen from, which is like a super ancient um, fabric, right? Um, so that's from the actual stock of the plant. And, uh, and then you can press it and you can get oil for eating, you can get oil for like pastel colors if you're, uh, if you're an artist. And you can also have this version of the oil, which is uh, usually used for, for carpentry finish work, for woodwork, you, what you put on, 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 your, on your wood. And, uh, and we actually grow, we, we, we've grown flax here uh, several times. And uh, as useful as it is, I am not inclined at all whatsoever to process it into any of the things that I just mentioned above. Um, we just like to um, put it in our in our oatmeal, but uh, yeah, yay for flax and the industry that turns it into all these beautiful things. So I'm gonna be doing a bunch of coats on these because it just like soaks it up and soaks it up and soaks it up. So um, yeah, and then hopefully tomorrow I can put that bead of caulk and then we'll call it enclosed. That's another bush. Hey, you guys. Chiltepins. Yay. Chiltepins are here. We're very excited because we got them early. Early this season. She said because of all the rain that we have been blessed with. And now we're, we're harvesting some. Normally we do we do this in like September, October, mid September maybe, and we start harvesting. But maybe we're gonna start right now, and hopefully they can sprout or bloom, bloom again, and have more flowers, and we can produce they can produce a little bit more. Um, we already had a video. Mushroom. Mushroom, someone. <laughs> so so much humidity. We already had a video on how we prepare them, but. I'll do it. I'll repeat them again. Uh, we brine them. We put salt uh, on them and we let them um, ferment and they taste so good, so delicious. And it's, yeah, we, we take them with our meals or with our breakfast. They're very excited. We just cut them like this, one by one, and just have a nice, yeah, put them here somewhere. Thank you. Samuel is helping us. I remember when I was um, pregnant with Samuel and we were doing the same thing. And now he is helping me. That's amazing also. So I thought we were enclosed in the studio and then I come in one day and there's one of these inoffensive liar snakes in here. And I thought, how on earth did this get in here? But I realized that there's that vent hole up there that I totally neglected to, <laughs> to close up. Um, so that's probably, I mean, that's the only way it could have gotten in. Um, but it looks like it's pretty asleep, this snake. And my usual sticks are um, 
can't get them right now, but but it looks like it's pretty. I got this other stick, but the head is right here. And come on, buddy. Lime from the hardware store. We we need a little bit more lime to finish painting the inside of the studio, but before we use it we need to soak it in water for a few days. So the buckets are full of water and we are putting the lime inside of the buckets it's Stefan if it's it's important to first put the water and then the the um, the lime right yes that's what everybody says but then you talk to a few of the rogue masters and it depends what kind of lime you're using I've heard one of the masters say it's like no 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 it's totally the opposite rate but there's so many different kinds of, of lime um, that yeah things can change and vary And we put it in water to make a lime paste and keep it as a paste instead of keeping it in like powder um, because uh, it's more stable or because it's... Yeah, like if, if you keep it dry like that, it'll absorb ambient moisture and it'll just turn into stone. But if you leave it soaking in water, you can keep it for literally forever. Mm -hmm. And then you can just get some of the lime putty whenever you need it to make paint or mortar or whatever. Hello, once again, we have a lot of invasion of green plants, beautiful, but comes with a lot of um, allergies and a lot of sugars and bugs and we cannot see anything. Everything disappears around the green, the green plants. So, Stevan is sharpening an uh, awesome tool that I don't know the word in English. Traspana in Espanol. Thank you, Samuel. In Spanish, it's called Traspana. And it's a tool, simple, to get rid of the plants, of the green, of the weeds. It's the old school weed whacker. Old school weed whacker. I think we talked about it or we have shown show some clips about it. And now you can see it up close. And Steven's giving it giving it a ghoul a good sharp button. So it's easier to get all of this, 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 all of this away.